Collaboration. At work, we have to collaborate together to perform the best on our projects. In Toastmasters, we work together. In our communities, we work together. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, what's the best way to start a working relationship with someone we want on our team? One of my heroes is Dr. Steve Sugarroot. He shared a story with me of his own personal experience. He started by saying, I had breakfast with a hero of mine, the man who started paddleboard surfing. His name was Laird Hamilton. I was so eager to share my ideas. I spent 20 minutes and shared all the ideas I had with him. At the end of the breakfast, he seemed less than impressed. I wondered, what did I do wrong? I must have done something wrong. But what could it be? I couldn't think of anything I would have done differently. Another of his heroes was a man named Swain Rasmussen. Swain Rasmussen was the owner of Starboard Windsurfing, one of the best and leading windsurfing companies in the world. And he met with him an hour later. And he said, Swain shared with me all that he was doing. He'd spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours working on the problem of how to clean up our oceans. He was a great fellow. He had this Einstein twinkle in his eye, great ideas bubbling with enthusiasm, sometimes provocative. He was a genius. So I decided to introduce Swain to Laird. They had so much in common. Now, both of these guys knew of each other, but they'd never met or talked. And I thought, here it is. Swain's going to share all the great ideas he's been working on, some of which are already underway. <clears throat> but I was wrong. Instead, Swain asked Laird, what do you see as the biggest problem? So Laird went on ten, for 10 minutes talking about how the oceans have to be cleaned and how us, as users of the ocean, have the biggest responsibility to clean it up. After 10 minutes, Swain asked him another question. What do you see as the, as the solution? Swain went on, Laird went on for another 10 minutes, talking about his ideas and how we should go about cleaning up the oceans. And finally, after 20 minutes of listening intently to Laird, the tables were turned. <coughs> Laird turned to Swain and say, said, what's your take on this? And Swain answered by, by saying this question. How can we work on this together? So they went on and decided they were both the big names in their sport and decided that together, they could accomplish more than they could separately. After that time, there were several people tugging at both of these men, wanting to get their attention. So they shared their contact information and went their separate ways. They had started a great relationship, or at least a relationship that had a great start because they admired each other and respected each other. And I realized I had done something wrong at the breakfast. I had these ideas I wanted to share with Laird, but I'd gone about it in the wrong way. Swain didn't force his ideas on Laird. He didn't tell him or brag about what he had already been doing. He let Laird talk about it. And he listened intently. He took notes. And then at the end, he said he offered to help with expecting nothing in return. How humble is that? But it was the right way to approach a man like Laird. I want to say thank you to Swain for teaching me how to approach people like that. And I want to say thank you to Steve Sugarroot for sharing his story with me. But does that work for us? Ten months ago, I was at a district function 
when another Toastmaster named she Shelly Gabriel came up to me. Shelly knew that I had been a conference chair twice and been Lieutenant Governor of Education training twice as well, which meant I had been responsible in the past for six district conferences. And she eagerly said to me, I have volunteered to be the fall conference chair. I'm so excited. I want it to be the best conference ever. And I said to her, what do you see as the biggest obstacle to success? And she shared with me the problem of getting Toastmasters at all levels around the state to come all the way to Flagstaff so they could have a great conference and even have a quorum for the business meeting. And I said, what's your strategy for accomplishing this? And then she went on to talk about how we're going to try to hold costs down, how to recruit good people on our committee, how to publicize and have great education sessions. And then I said to her, how can I help you accomplish this? That's what she was waiting for. I want you to be my mentor. So in the months that followed, we had several one-on-one -on -one conversations. I helped with the budget. I attended all the committee meetings and offered advice when asked. And in the end, last November, we had the greatest ever fall conference. It was one of the best. It's a memorable one that people will remember for a long time. If you were there, I'm sure you remember it. But the lesson is learned. How do you recruit someone special to make your project a success? Or simply get off the project you're on now? Ask three questions. What do you see as the problem? What's your solution to the problem? And do you need help? If you do that, you're on your way to success. You're not only starting the relationship the best way, but the relationship between myself and Shelley continues on to this day. It worked for me, it can work for you, Mr. Toastmaster.